Now we turn to health editor for U.S. News and World Report, Dr. Bernadine Healy. Good morning, Dr. Healy. Good morning. I think it's important right off the bat to stress that the group making these new pap smear recommendations is not the federal task force that changed the mammography re um, recommendations earlier this week. This is a group of obstetricians and gynecologists, right? These You're two absolutely are not right. related. You're absolutely right, and, the, and these include cancer specialists. And by the way, these are very prudent and sensible guidelines, and they are ones that have been long in coming, and they are based on very good science. When it comes to cervical cancer, we pretty much know when that STD happened. We pretty much know when a woman is infected, and we know the time course of it, uh, and these are responsible and based on that. In the case of mammography, uh, breast cancer is something that uh, is much more complicated. We don't know its time course. We don't know when it actually really started. And more important, there is evidence that the mammography guidelines save lives in women in their 40s. So if you take them away from them, we will see more deaths from breast cancer. There is no evidence whatsoever that these cervical cancer guidelines will lead to any increased deaths. Okay, so it's clear to me that you think these pap smear guidelines are a good idea. You're not in favor of the mammography guidelines. Let's talk quickly first about the pap smear guidelines, which I think women will still be skeptical of these new recommendations because pap smears have been so greatly reduced since these regular screenings began. Well, I, I think that one of the important things here is that this ultimately should be a doctor-patient choice. And what we saw with the mammogram guidelines this week was this assault on, on patient-doctor choice. With regard to the cervical cancer guidelines, remember, it says that if a woman has a past history, for example, of HPV or of an abnormal pap smear, then then this doesn't necessarily apply to her. She may need to have uh, annual pap smears, and that has to be a discussion between that woman and her doctor. That but, should not come from the White House. But what, what if these two recommendations send the message to women that screening is not as important as they were taught their whole lives? Well, that'll be terrible. And, and one of the goals of health reform is to put emphasis on preventing disease, uh, early detection of cancers, so that they don't present late when they destroy destroy a woman's life. Uh, so I think that that would be an unfortunate thing, and maybe this is a good opportunity to look at these two guidelines and see how one can be very sensible, mm -hmm. it can make life easier for women, and it doesn't cost a life. These other guidelines that they have revised will cost women's lives, and that's the bottom line. Dr. Bernadine Healy, thank you so much.